I think you would be hard pressed to find a maker who hasn't been inspired by the innovation Lego has provided over the years. For me, my eyes were open when I discovered Lego Technic. They had so many mechanical components like gears, shafts, and pneumatic cylinders. It was particularly inspiring to be able to make your Legos move. I'm pretty sure these memories are a part of why I became an engineer. As a kid, the engineering of Lego seemed like a miracle. To be honest, they still hold somewhat of a mystery, but I'm going to see if I can recreate their pneumatic system, with some caveats. 1. It will be 3D printed. 2. It will be at a scale of 3 times normal LEGO size. 3. It will have some industrial components like fittings and the use of metal when necessary. So with the rules in place, I will explain the way the LEGO pneumatic system works. This version of the pneumatic cylinder has two ports for air, meaning it is a dual action cylinder. When air is forced into one side of the cylinder, it causes the piston to move. This air directed by a switch or valve which forces the air into one side of the cylinder or the other. The pump provides a source of compressed air for the entire system. There are three ports on the switch, one for input from the pump and two outputs to the ports on the cylinder. The heart of the switch is a silicone gasket which has a channel to connect the center source of air to either one side or the other. While the pump and the cylinder provide the action for what makes this system fun, the hardest part will be recreating the switch and the gasket therein. All right, tonight is documentation of the process for making a silicone mold for the Lego pneumatic cylinder. Uh, I'm a little nervous about it because the first, the first version didn't really work out so well and I'll show you here. forgot my basics of casting in that you really need a release when you're casting one material into another. And a release is typically so some things don't stick or fuse to one another. I didn't think ahead and I got really hasty with it so here I am trying it for a second try. I did It did actually make me consider doing a two-part mold to make it easier to release or break away and so we're gonna give that a try too. I have a two-part mold here comes together has holes to bring it together. This will actually become the gasket for the switch for the pneumatic cylinder. You can see examples of it within the video and I'll show exactly how it works. And this is derived exactly from the way Lego does their switch. I've torn it apart and you can see they have a gasket just like this and I'm replicating it just in a larger size. So as you can see, I've had some issues casting the silicone just using straight household silicone. It is 100%, but it is not does not have the tear resistance for mold removal. So I ordered a two-part solution from McMaster Car. It's called Quicksil, and it's like two putties that you mix together, and it has a one-minute working time and a 15 minute cure time before you can remove from a mold. So I'll know very quickly whether this is gonna work or not. 
this type of silicone is used for quick jewelry casting or actually prototype casting. You can make gaskets or actually mother molds very quickly with this. It's also beneficial for if you don't have a vacuum chamber to degas because a lot of two-part silicones require you to degas them before you cast them, which is kind of a pain. I don't have anything like that yet. I'm still building my tooling arsenal to get there. So uh, we're going to go with something like this and hopefully it'll be Hopefully it'll be usable. I have no idea. This is all an experiment just for the switch for the pneumatic cylinder. The gasket here that I was actually able to cast, it has air bubbles and it's sheared on the way out. You can kind of see it here. So I'm hoping that there is some tensile strength to this stuff. So we'll see. And if it doesn't, then I have a plan for using O-rings on the switch instead. And if that doesn't work, then I'll just buy an industrial switch, which that will be admitting failure on making a valve for 3D printing, but maybe it'll be a evolution in process. So, all right, moving on. So the last mold was redeemable after I pulled that piece out because the Vaseline release worked pretty well. With this stuff, I don't know if I'm gonna even need a release. It says it has a mineral oil base and they say nothing about a release in the instructions. So here's hoping, but um, if you see me struggling later, You'll know why, because it's stuck to the PLA. So for now, I'm going to assemble this mode together and add this, mix and add this. So we'll see how it goes. Typically, they say to mix equal amounts of both part A and part B. And you'll just roll it together in your hands. And you'll have about a minute working time after you get that going. So we'll see. And you have to squeeze it together. So I'm going to put fill this cavity with this enough material that I think will work and maybe more. Then I'm going to use a flat piece to push onto this and I'm going to clamp it using the vise. Force the material inside of it. Mod's curious today. see it squished out all the excess hopefully enough is inside here for the mold should be ready in 15 minutes it's been about 25 minutes instead of 15 I'm a little nervous about the wood probably should be because it's stuck yeah that's stuck that's not good I had a hunch it might do this, but I was being hasty and doing stupid things. There we go. It's releasing even off the wood, which is nice. Crazy. All right. So you can see it just peels off the wood, but I have a promising look at this. Feels solid. I'm I'm hopeful. This stuff looks like it could actually work. It already looks like it wants to pull out of the mold. I got a little gap in here. So if this is promising, then it takes 15 minutes, then I can work on making a better mold or I can work on my technique for applying this into the mold. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's pretty good so far. Half of the mold is pulled and it looks great. You can see it has a little bit of flashing inside there from the pressure of the uh, of the vice pushing it in there, but I can deal with that. Oh man, that is the first perfect casting I've had. Man, that's nice. Flashing peels off pretty easily. So I have my first draft switch here, which the housing will change. This was just a mock-up to make sure 
I had the uh, geometry correct in here. You can see it inside. So, but inside here you see the U-shaped piece that this was designed to go into. So, first time fit. Oh, 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 oh yeah. That looks pretty nice. Looks excellent. That's super exciting. I don't know if it'll hold pressure for air. It sure looks like a great facsimile of the original Lego Switch, which I'll show you here. So here's my version, and here's their version. And look at that. Very similar to one another. They have a little different shape in here, but I feel like I duplicated their method pretty well. Hopefully it'll seal against these three holes inside the switch here, the housing box, and it mates up to the sidewalls pretty well. When you switch it over to these two sides, these two should flow air between each other because this will be the pump feed. This is the output to the cylinder. Hopefully the manual pump will actually feed through these two. This is really promising. It's the first promising thing with this that I've seen. Yeah, it's not easy trying to do this investigative stuff. Gasket making and mold making are not my fortes at all. I much prefer machining. I don't really enjoy casting at all, but it's necessary for this because there's no other way to really make it. I would highly recommend this stuff for anybody looking into it. You could cast molds into your 3D prints really well. Very much recommended. And it was from McMaster Carr and I will, I will share the link in the bottom and the part number that you can get for it for this type of size. They should have varying different volumes you can get too. This is definitely not sponsored, but man, I love McMaster Car. They have everything you can need. Cover plate's really nice. It's got little uh, catches in there. And then I have holes for screws around the corners. This should slide in and fasten and hold the switch down and also put a little pressure simultaneously on the gasket. Boom. I may actually have a switch. Now I just need to tap these uh, pieces here. They're a 16th MPT. I have all these nice push fittings, but there's some things in this that I had to make more industrial just for the sake of making it work, really. I mean, I could have made these like the little tube male fittings on here where the tube could just go over it, but I figured this is getting large enough that it needs a little bit more robust connections. And besides that, it's just going to look cool with industrial push fit connections for the tubing. So each of these will be mounted here and I'll have uh, three different out an inlet and then two outlets and the switch will direct between the two uh, so I gotta tap these uh, 1 16th MPT hopefully I can tap deep enough for these fittings to mate to this form with this piece here you can see how far that this does not go in so which leads me to talk about why I had to trim this guy. You can see the tip of this tap has a lead in. And if I were to trim a lot of this off and maybe create my own chamfered lead in, I could go in that much further into this piece here, therefore allowing this to screw in more. Taps are typically high-speed steel. There are carbide versions, but since this is hardened steel essentially, I can cut through it with an abrasive cutoff wheel. I'm going to wind up using my angle grinder and a cutoff wheel to get this, which is overkill for this size tap, but I got to do it anyway, so it's because it's what I have. 